Welcome back. I have here on my desk an Arduino Nano on a breadboard with some resistors and ignore that thingy here. That's just for connecting oscilloscope probes. And connected to that I have a ooh, long cable. Ah, here it is. An Allegro A1334. And in addition, I have here a little neodymium magnet. So, what can we do with that? And with that set up, I can measure the angle of a magnetic field. Not just its presence or its strength, but its angle and the numbers, of course, on the left side of the screen, these are just degrees, oh, too far away, degrees angle. And, uh, uh neodymium, dangerous. And by the way, uh, that's my wall of video ideas behind me with, with all the post-its. I sometimes call, uh, talk about it in the comments and it's real. So in this video, I will talk, of course, about that chip, the Allegro A1334, though I will not really go into depth because that chip is, that chip is obsolete anyway, uh, but you can still get it for cheap, uh, very cheap for such a Hall Effect Angel sensor. That's why I bought it, five of them. Uh, we will, of course, have a look at the SPI bus and the software and the little circuitry here on my breadboard with the Arduino Nano, but uh, it's really all quite trivial. Uh, I will mainly focus on the basic principles of these angle, Hall effect angle sensors and uh, yeah, some terminology and some techniques around them. Enjoy. Let's talk first about that little neodymium magnet here. Uh, you probably have uh, one in your hands or several and played with them at one point in time. This one is a little bit special. Usually you have the North Pole on one side and the magnetic South Pole on the other side. That one, if we put here a little compass has the North Pole in one half, yeah, in this flat region and the North Pole is usually marked blue. So let's do that. And the South Pole is on the other side. And usually if you look at uh, pictures of magnets or yeah, some visualizations, the South Pole is red and the North Pole is blue. Uh, please ignore the colors here on the compass. There of course the North Pole is red because it's your important direction when you are aligning the compass. Within the data sheet of the Allegro A1135 Hall Effect Angel Sensor, which is very similar to the A1334 and is still an active part available, we find a very nice picture showing the interaction between that special magnet and the Hall element, that is Hall elements within the chip. The important thing here is that the magnetic field lines are crossing horizontally through the Hall element or better Hall elements. Let's have a closer look at this Hall element part. Before we dive in, if you want to know how Hall elements work in principle, I've made a video about Hall effect switches, card here, link in the description, where I explain that in detail. 
The hall elements in these Aleco chips are not simply yeah, two square plates like uh, in a switch, hall effect switch chip, but they have the form of a ring. Yeah, we're looking here onto the top of the chip. And in principle, it's one big circular hall element, but <laughs> it has a lot of contacts. So in effect, we have here a ring of several hull elements. And Allegro calls this circular vertical, yeah, because it goes into the depth of the chip, hull technology. In the actual chip, we have 64 segments or contacts here on our hall element. For obvious reasons, I've drawn here only eight. But let's have a look at one of these segments. If the magnetic field lines cross here from south to north, yeah, perpendicular to the orientation of the segment, we get a maximum positive signal. If they would go here from south to north, we would get a maximum negative seg uh, signal out of that segment. And if they are crossing at a 90 degree angle, yeah, the direction doesn't matter, we get a zero signal. And then everything in between, yeah, following a sine function depending on the angle. For example, if our external magnet would be aligned this way, we get a positive signal, maximum positive signal from this segment, maximum negative signal from this segment, no, yeah, 90 degree angle, no signals from these segments, and the other four segments are positive, negative in between, depending, yeah, 45, sine of 45, plus minus. And as the magnet turns, yeah, the picture changes, of course. And this way you can get really, really precise angle measurements of your magnetic field. We can reduce the whole thing to just two Hall elements oriented perpendicular to each other. If we start now with our magnet as, let's call that zero degree, this element will give us the maximum signal output, positive, and that element will give us a zero signal output. And as we turn the magnet 360 degrees, this element will give us a sine wave over zero to 360 degrees, and that element will give us a cosine wave from zero to 360 degrees. And most vendors indeed have only two Hall elements in their chip, and at some chips you get these raw signals as outputs, the sine and the cosine of the angle. And this is also called a sine cosine angle encoded output. Please note, the amplitude of the signals doesn't matter. So if the magnet is uh, closer to our chip or further away, weaker or stronger, doesn't matter. All that matters is the relationship, the phase relationship of these two signals. Of course, Allegro says <laughs> using a whole lot of Hall elements is much better. How about some experiments uh, to see how that chip really performs? But instead of trying to position the magnet with my fingers above the chip and rotate it, which is a wee bit awkward and not very precise, let's build a little jig to do that. I've made the jig. <laughs> Of all things out of Lego, yeah, childhood memories. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm one of those guys who played a lot with Lego. And please note the Lego purists among you, I here have only here three colors, yellow, gray, 
and the black axle. I think back then there were only black axles. Anyway, um, let's have some closer looks. I think I got the horizontal alignment quite good here. Yeah, you see the, uh, <laughs> let me take something else to point. Uh, yeah, this is uh, still too big. Uh, there, the black thing is the chip. And if we rotate, yeah, it's a little bit off axis, I admit it, but uh, it's good enough. The vertical alignment uh, again, uh, sorry. There's our black chip is also not too shabby and yeah. The magnet, uh, which I glued of course onto uh, the Lego is yeah, almost centered. And by the way, the air gap between the magnet and the chip is currently at about 2.5 millimeters, maybe a little bit less than 2.5 millimeters. Okay, oops, uh, let's do some experiments then. Let's first find approximately zero degrees. Oh, there I got it. Okay, I guess that here is zero degrees, so let me mark that. And then we turn that around until we're approximately at 90 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Looks good, doesn't it? And the other way around, that's then 270 degrees. Oh, spot on. And then we have to... <clears throat> okay, the problem here is it's 21 teeth. So uh, 180 degrees should be uh, these two teeth here. Let's see if I marked the right ones. Uh, okay, 180. Okay, yeah, perfectly. I mean, that, that was easy. But what happens <laughs> if I put 2.5 millimeters of ABS into the air gap? Okay, let's really close that up here. We got still a reading. So ABS is obviously, uh, I mean, it's non-magnetic. That's not too surprising. So we're 90 or 270, 270, about zero degrees again. Yeah, or 360 and 270 degrees, uh, 90 degrees, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Now that the whole thing works through, uh, yeah, low density, relatively low density ABS, uh, that comes to no surprise, but now let's put in a uh, 1.5 millimeter glass fiber PCB with 25 micrometers of copper on it. Again, copper, a non-magnetic metal. Uh, let's go to the zero position. Yeah, no problem. 270 degrees. No problem, no problem, no problem at all. Great, <laughs> I can do one better. I mean, I won't show you what happens if you put iron or something in there. Or maybe I do. Um, how about 0.3 millimeter aluminum or aluminium? I mean, I know it works with aluminum. I'm not so sure about aluminum and I'm a little bit careful here not to touch my PCB. Yeah, maybe it would be a great idea 
to isolate my PCB with all the wires with a little bit of paper before doing that experiment. Okay, now I can sleep comfortably while putting 0.3 millimeter aluminum, again, a non-magnetic metal in here. So zero, perfect, 270, perfect, 90, uh, 180, perfect, 90, perfect. Yeah, nice. Uh, what about <clears throat> another 0.3 millimeter? Okay, that obviously works too. Can I do uh, one more? Uh, <laughs> another 0.3 millimeter aluminum. Yeah, it's it's uh, uh, the sensor is clearly not faced by uh, plastics or non-metallic, uh, non-iron metals. No, non-metallic metals, non-iron metals, so non-magnetic metals. So no problem here. Uh, let's try something else. So I widened the air gap here to approximately, yeah, we are now at six millimeters. And obviously, as you can see by the numbers, the thing still works perfectly. So zero degrees, 270, about as 180, and 90. Oh, this is, this is really impressive. I mean, this is a little magnet here, uh, not too strong as I've shown you. Um, and yeah, of course I can insert again our plastic sheet. It will change absolutely nothing. This is still working without flaw. That's, that's quite impressive. That's really quite impressive. Uh, but I have an, uh, another thing, another idea I want to test. Now I offset the magnet. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, the magnet has now an offset about four millimeters yeah, in this direction. And if I zoom out, you can Hopefully read, yeah, it's four millimeters. People in the business, the <laughs> Hall Effect uh, Angel Sensor business call this off axis. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much on our 90 degree setting and suddenly our sensor is, yeah, uh, there, the numbers is at 330 degrees. And if I go to my 270 degree, we are now at 290. And 180 degree reads as, well, 160. And my 90 degree reads as, yeah, 110. So, uh, yeah. Something's going on there. Uh, let's have a look at the data sheet. But before that, let me try that again with uh, yeah some plastic in between. Yeah, works fine. Plastic is absolutely no problem for that thingy. And yeah, just a little bit more hardcore also in this configuration with the copper. Yeah, absolutely no problem. Uh, what else? Ah, I got an idea. idea. Uh, just so that we're clear, if I take some uh, sheet metal and I, this is no card trick, okay. I put it here into the paper so I don't make any shorts on my 
board here, my breakout board, if I put that in between here, uh, I only get uh, error messages, of course. So what we did in the very end is called an off-axis measurement. And that's actually quite hard. Again, that picture is, uh, I used that other picture before from the A1335 data sheet, but yeah, it's a nice picture, so we use it. So we have our magnet here, and these are, attention, not the magnetic field lines, but the magnetic flux. That is, the closer the lines are together, the higher the strength of the magnetic field. That's not the lines traveling from south to north, but the indicating the density of the lines. And yeah, naturally, if you go further away, we tested that up to uh, five millimeter it was, uh, you see there is still a region with a relatively strong magnetic flux, a strong magnetic field. But as soon as uh, you go to the sides of such magnets, the field strength decreases extremely. And we placed our chip, yeah, not exactly at the side, but uh, a little bit to the side and still a little bit off, three and a half millimeters. And yeah, it was barely working. Uh, it was working, but what we saw was that our readings were wrong. Remember that picture where I explained how the circular vertical hull technology sensors work? Well, we use that again to explain that error. So as long as my magnet, these are the field lines, I need long field lines now, is centered and we rotate it, yeah, the straight field lines always go through opposite elements in that circular hull element array. However, if we go a little bit off center, yeah, in that direction, everything is still fine. But if we rotate now, we're still going straight through this array, but now that thing here starts to come into play. And now the output signal from that array is going to zero. And <laughs> yeah, you see the problem. Fortunately, fortunately, yeah, we have a circle here and we have angles and we have rotation. And that means the error also follows a sine function and the amplitude is gets larger the farther away we are with the magnet from the center of our sensor. And that is easily corrected, but that's a more advanced topic I won't cover in these videos. And that's it for today. Uh, yeah, I already mentioned at the end of my last video, I'm currently, because of work, pressed for time. And uh, yeah, I have somehow to edit all that stuff till the weekend. Uh, so you can enjoy this video on Sunday. Anyway, uh, next time we will talk about the circuit on the board and the circuitry here on the breakout board, which is really simple, that's not the problem. Uh, but we will also talk about the software, because there is no Arduino library for that chip, believe me. And of course, we'll have a look at the oscilloscope, what's going on on the SPI bus. Yeah, uh, I hope I can do that in just one more part, we will see. Maybe it's two more parts. Um, as I mentioned, I'm pressed for time right now. Anyway, that's it for today. Till next time, bye.